All right. Um, so I wanted to do a little video on sort of like why you would want to use OpenBSD and sort of what it's like to use OpenBSD as your daily driving operating system. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the truth is it's like, honestly, it's not that different from like how Linux could be. Uh, I feel like Linux suffers a little bit from like having so many distributions that try to get like a set of applications pre-installed and the right sort of configuration so that users can just sort of use it right out of the box and they like it. But the truth is with any Linux distribution, you can make it look exactly like any other Linux distribution. The only thing that really separates distributions um, like truly, as far as I'm aware, is like the package manager. Um, everything else is configurable, right? So like um, <clears throat> I've run Arch um, with uh, like FVWM as my uh, as my like window manager um, and like installed Emacs and Firefox and Tor um, and uh, you know just for the most part it feels like a lot of things feel very similar you know um So, you know, in that sense, like there's not really that much difference between OpenBSD and Linux in that they're both very configurable. And like you can make OpenBSD look very similar to most, like pretty much any Linux distribution. Um, Cause like you can put GNOME, like you can use GNOME as your like desktop environment um, in, OpenBSD. Um, I'm pretty sure um, they're like they have KDE. Ah, um, I've got my uh, I'm pretty sure there's like there's KDE. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you got KDE as a package, so you could run, uh, you know, KDE as your your desktop environment. You've got your tiling window managers like DWM and i3, um, and like you know, you can run Chromium, you can run Firefox. You know, like most of the user space um, programs, you can run on both. You can. Uh, you can't run OBS, right? So if you're really into like recording videos and doing live streams and stuff like that, you're gonna have to learn a little bit about FFmpeg. Um, but I've loved doing that. Um, and I think <clears throat> um, sort of like how Arch forces you to learn uh, how to run Linux, really, I think. Um, I feel like OpenBSD makes you learn how uh, to use. Uh, you can't sort of skate by. You're gonna have to learn some things. Um, so that's sort of maybe one reason why you might want to use OpenBSD. Um, <clears throat> although it's certainly not exclusive to OpenBSD versus other uh, Linux distributions like Arch. Um, so. <laughs> you know and okay briefly sort of what it's like for my setup uh i have like um i have fvwm i have it configured to have um four uh sort of desks 
um, or my like virtual desktop is actually like four times bigger than my screen. So if you pay attention to this little like page number, you can see that I'm on page zero zero and I have keyboard shortcuts to go like down one and go over one. And then obviously you can go over and down one. And then I've also got keyboard shortcuts to, um, you know, go between different desks. So there's four separate desks, each that are four uh, screens bigger than my actual uh, monitor. Um, but like, you know, like I said, that's totally configurable and I've done that with Arch. Um, and like, you can see that like switching the desk, uh, but staying on the same page uh, takes me away from my Emacs uh, window or frame here. Um, and to use the Emacs terminology. Um, and, you know, I, I tend to use Tor for pretty much everything instead of uh, like Firefox. Um, and, you know, there's not really anything special about that. Um, and, you know, I've used um, Xterm. Uh, in the past as my like primary uh, way of interacting with the command line, uh, Xterm and Tmux. Um, but now I just tend to do everything in Emacs. Um, Emacs uh, has a little bit better copy and paste functionality. So when I do need to copy something from a web browser uh, to the command line, uh, especially since I remapped my keyboard that tends to work a little bit better uh, with Emacs than with Xterm. Um, Xterm doesn't really handle those keyboard remappings quite as well as um, I would, I want it to. Um, and Emacs has a couple of things. So like uh, I check my email in like, Emacs has, uh, okay, so Emacs has a couple of issues with copy and paste. Um, in its terminal emulator, which I've got here on the right, um, but not really, you know, copy and paste tends to work very well in the uh, Emacs shell. Um, the difference is that um, I like to check my email with mutt in the terminal. Um, I tried, I tried to use, I really tried to use, um, the GNU's uh, news and mail reader uh, for my email in Emacs and I couldn't get it to work how I wanted it to and it seems like um, it's not really possible although I've changed a couple things about my email setup since then uh, so it might be possible now but I'm just kind of sticking with mutt um, for, you know, checking and reading my email. Um, and, uh, I think for most people, um, if you like really want to do everything in Emacs, you can run mutt inside the terminal emulator. Um, and it works totally fine. And it also, you know, if you're having copy paste issues with like X term, uh, like I did, uh, that tend to work pretty well. Um, I also um, have, actually I think that's in downloads. Yeah, so um, I, I read PDFs in Emacs as well. Um, you can, I've got, you know, uh, there's some built-in keyboard shortcuts that are pretty nice for, you know, uh, browsing the, uh, the PDF. Um, and uh, you can add like little annotations. So um, I think, yeah, so like you can see that I've like highlighted stuff. Um, which you can do in most PDF readers. I used Zathura before I got everything set up with Emacs. 
um, <clears throat> PDF tools is the package that I use. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Um, I, and like, like I said, most of this you can just do with Linux and, um, in asking myself why I stick with OpenBSD, uh, I came up with not a ton of reasons, uh, but like maybe three or four that really keep me around. And uh, the big one that got me both into OpenBSD and that I continue to appreciate a lot is that everything that is... Um, part of the OpenBSD base system has really good manuals for it. Um, so, like, if I do MX man, you know, LS, um, the manual page for LS is really good. Um, and in general, all of the commands have really good manual pages. Uh, the C library manual pages, I use those all the time when I'm programming in C. Uh, those are all really good. Um, the like system administration and configuration file commands are all really good. Um, the less used uh, the functionality is, uh, the less quality the man pages are, but they're still really good and they frequently have examples um which a lot of like the linux man pages i felt like didn't have um the other thing that i really liked about openbsd is that like the base a base install um especially if you're not running x um can have like 20 processes running processes processes I think pro I always say processes um, anyway uh, you, like there's like it's very simple um, and uh, yeah I, I do really enjoy the simplicity of it um, so um, like this is with all the stuff running and like those are all of the uh, those are all of the processes processes um, it's like a page and a half so um, <sighs> hmm if I do in uh, lines It doesn't have lines. Um, here. Does it have rows? Normally, Xterm has an environment variable called, like, lines. Maybe it's not an environment. Yeah, 43. So a page and a half is, like, you know, 60-ish processes. Um, so, and like a lot of those are, um, not totally necessary. So, but yeah, oh, got, got a little visitor. So yeah, um, so my, uh, my daughter's watching. Uh, so, something happened. oh, something happened, huh? Uh, her her mom's got a uh, is having a big day at work today. So anyway, um, the high quality man pages, the simplicity related to the simplicity is the fact that um, uh, OpenBSD still uses like a, a standard init. Um, so the init process basically. Uh, you know, it's pretty short, less than 1,500 lines. Um, 
a lot of Linux distributions have switched to using uh, System D uh, as their like first process that runs. And I understand uh, like that it has apparently a lot of extra functionality that sort of the traditional init that a lot of Linux distributions were running didn't. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know what that functionality is. Uh, like I don't, <laughs> I don't uh, run into it uh, enough for it to seem worth the like. I think it's like a hundred and fifty thousand lines of code or something in that uh, system D, you know, program. And the init program, right? Like it's fifteen hundred lines of code, and like you can see. Um, before you even, like the main process um, is um, 96 lines and like, you know, most of the like functionality that this is doing is just catching signals. And then it um, runs like the RC script um, which um, yeah, so it runs this uh, RC script, which is 600-ish lines. Um, and it's like, if you need to figure out sort of what your machine is doing at startup, uh, you can, right? Like it's pretty easy and it doesn't try to do too much, which I feel like the system D uh, process does, um, right? And just configuring things just seems really simple. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, you know, like if you want to, uh, you know, like I think like you just use RC control. Um, to like list everything that's on, um, list all the daemons that are running, you know? Um, and yeah, configuring things seems, seems really simple. Uh, it's just all text files. Um, there's one way to do things. And <clears throat> because it's not split between like Linux and GNU, and because it's like one whole operating system being maintained, uh, by one group, um, everything just feels more tightly integrated. And uh, because the man pages are so good, uh, figuring out how to do things is, um, if not easy, doable. Whereas uh, with Linux, it feels overwhelming a lot of, a lot of the time uh, to me. So <clears throat> that's... Uh, you know, that maybe is kind of it, really. Like, um, maybe the last thing that I'll say is that uh, I like a lot of the security features. You know, I've programmed a little bit with some of them. Um, like, like pledge um, and uh, unveil. Um, so with pledge, you can restrict uh, for a process uh, the system calls that can be made. So you can restrict uh, like what functionality uh, a process has access to in the kernel. Um, and unveil lets you restrict uh, like a process to only being able to use parts of a file system. Um, <clears throat> and I think there are similar things to this in uh, Linux. Um, but I really like how OpenBSD has done this. And even as someone who does not, like I would not consider myself a professional C program. I mean, I'm not a professional C programmer. I don't make money off of it. Uh, but I wouldn't even consider myself like a, a very good C programmer. I'm a, you know, functional C programmer in the sense that like I am functional using C, not that <laughs> I, uh, not that like C is a functional language or whatever. Um, but <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, 
there's just all kinds of little things that um, they do that I I really enjoy, and <clears throat> I've really enjoyed like learning about OpenBSD um, and just how my computer works. And that's really I want to feel in control when I use a computer, or maybe just like in life in general. You know, like we're all, we all just kind of want to feel like we've got you know some control over our lives and <clears throat> sometimes things can be really things can be really stressful out there and <clears throat> for me sitting down at my computer you know just learning about OpenBSD not under any pressure um, is a really like soothing experience um, and I've I've really enjoyed it, and I uh, I hope that you'll give it a shot. Um, and uh, you know I'm gonna have some videos out here soon that will sort of help you get things set up and running and configured how I have them, so that you don't have to. You know, having all that freedom can sometimes be a little overwhelming. So you know, uh, <laughs> oh I don't know because I can play videos with it <laughs> from here. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, uh, getting to learn about OpenBSD and all that fun stuff, um, I've, I've really enjoyed. So uh, I hope that, you know, getting you started and uh, showing you sort of what you can do with all that freedom will make all that freedom a little less daunting. Because, um, you know, sometimes... A lot of freedom can be very daunting, um, so yeah. Um, I hope that you'll uh, you'll give it a shot um, if you're uh, wanting to have that kind of experience uh, when you use your computer. So anyway, um, that's it for this one. Uh, if you liked this, you know, let me know. I uh, I can I can use I can use a little positive reinforcement every now and then. If you don't like it, dislike it. Dislike the video. And uh, let me know why you disliked it. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns uh, or criticisms or uh, contributions your, your face. or anything like that. Your face. Oh, apparently my face is funny. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me know if you got anything like that that you want too. So, uh, that you want to let me know about. And uh, if you uh, like these videos and want to know when I make more, then subscribe. Uh, and that's it for this one. Thanks so much. Peace! <laughs>